Welcome to this recorded Eucharist from St. Margaret's of Antioch, Toxteth, on Remembrance Sunday. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Turn to us again, O God our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Your salvation is near for those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The God of love, bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray that God will lead the nations into the paths of peace. God our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. New Testament reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. over two pages here. I'll have to start again. Just, I'll keep it rolling and just start again and I can cut it. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. 
Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St Matthew. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a great shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And when they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's a bright sunny day as I'm recording this. I've got the voice of Eric Idle running through my head singing Always look on the bright side of life. It's perhaps as well because November is a testing time for the spirit. The last of the leaves are beginning to fall. Mist and fog are more likely than sunshine and it gets dark before tea time. We could do without a lockdown as well, or the fear of sickness and death, or the uncertainties of world politics. Today or next Wednesday, despite the lockdown, there'll be gatherings, maybe virtual ones, around many war memorials up and down the country. We recall those who gave their lives to save their fellow humans. We're reminded of the horrors of war and division and we pray for peace. The church's liturgy in November points us towards Advent. Christ himself will come again to judge us all and the world. We read chapter 25 of St Matthew's Gospel which is terrifying in its warnings of the coming end of the world. The world is divided. Our country and Western civilization are divided. And so, as Jesus warned, families are divided. And Jesus calls us to take sides, not to be neutral. He tells us about a wedding. He enjoyed weddings, he enjoyed wine and festivities. They were fun and full of joy, as we can see from the story of the wedding at Cana. He wanted everybody to enjoy them and party to their heart's content so much that he didn't allow the wine to run out. But there's another reason why stories and parables about weddings feature so much in his teaching. A wedding banquet is an image of the heavenly banquet, that great festival at the end of time when all human life, all creation, comes together to celebrate our transformation into the Kingdom of God. Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, 
we get a taste, a glimpse of that final glory. Jesus is the bridegroom who comes to this wedding feast to be united with his bride. And that's us, the church. As we say every week, we are the body of Christ. We are one with Jesus Christ as the partners in a marriage are one with each other. So there's a great party prepared for us. One that not even the most party phobic introvert amongst us would want to miss. But we're not guaranteed admission. The guest who turned up in that other story without the proper clothes was turned away. And the bridesmaids in today's reading who had no oil for their lamps had the door slammed in their faces. It doesn't seem fair. All they did wrong was to be a bit lackadaisical about their preparations. After all, no one had warned them that they'd have to wait so long until nightfall. But they didn't have any oil. Not only was it essential fuel for the lamps, symbolically it represented repentance. Anoint your head, were warned at the beginning of Lent. Repent of your sins. The foolish bridesmaids had no oil. They weren't ready to repent. Maybe they didn't think they had any reason to. Oil is used for healing too. It's used medically even today. In biblical times it was used a lot more. And it's used in the sacrament of the sick. So if you have no oil, your wounds aren't going to get tended. Your sickness isn't going to be healed. Going to be healed. If we're trying to loosen a screw or a lock or anything mechanical, it's no good just bashing it with a hammer. Even though that's my preferred resource, usually. The chances are you'll just make it worse. Most things that are jammed need lubrication. WD-40 might not smell as nice as fragrant olive oil, but it works in the same way. Remembrance Day reminds us of the dangers of trying to bring about our aims by force. And that's not just something that is the fault of would-be world dictators or even over-mighty politicians. All of us can be guilty of the same thing when we get impatient. It's easy for me to have my own little plans for myself and other people and think that my life would be fine as long as I can force through my ideas, as long as I can get those stubborn others to see sense and do things my way. Peace is not sitting back and refusing to get involved. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Remembrance Day isn't, or shouldn't be, a jingoistic celebration of victory. Peace is about allowing God, God's healing oil, to unjam the blockages and calm our aggressions. That's true not just in a situation of war or international conflict, not just in an election campaign, but in all our relationships, all our life. Prayer for peace is the very opposite of attacking the problems of the world with a hammer. It's not trying to beat other people, let alone God, into submission. It's not about being impatient and crying out like a spoiled toddler if we don't get our own way. It's about gentleness. It's about oil. Letting the lubrication of God's Spirit ease the frustrations and jammed mechanics of our world. Being absolved from our sins with the oil of repentance and being set free from the pain of the world by the oil of healing. It doesn't mean retreating to the sidelines and refusing to get involved. We have to take sides. But the side we are on matters. 
we should be on the side of God's kingdom, working for the time when all people can share in God's banquet, the wedding feast of the Lamb. Amen. Let us remember before God and commend to his safekeeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of the peoples of the world. They shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will. will remember them. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that we may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us, who today remember the cost of war, to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. body 
and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised him. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever.
Let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to fullness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let also be with you. God grant to the living grace to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father,